Hello, welcome to the Northern Star Acting Podcast. And with me today, I have actress Victoria Hudson. How are you doing, Victoria? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm awesome today, thank you. Right, so before we start, I think congratulations are in order. (laughs) <laughs> so um just for everybody listening victoria has just got a role in a feature film how uh, much can you tell us about it at the minute are you able to say anything right now not very much no i'm trying to keep it um under the rug a little bit keep it a bit of a surprise um i can tell you that it's set in the 1940s and i am playing the character of betty um, outside of that, I can't really tell you. It's called The Forgotten Love. It's called um, The Forgotten Love, brilliant. Um, outside of that, I can't really tell you anything, but it's really exciting. It looks like it's going to be fantastic. There's some brilliant things happening around it. It's, it's definitely one to watch out for. It's going to be fantastic. Awesome. And how can people watch out for it? Where, where will it be updated about? Social media, just just keep an eye on there. Um, at the minute, there is a group for it, but it's private. So I'm sure when when there's more to tell, that will that will expand, and you can keep an eye out for us. But once once it all gets going, I will be sharing like mad on on every platform I have. So so just keep an eye on me. <laughs> awesome, awesome, and we'll um, at the end we'll go into where people can find you. Okay, so. Your acting. Tell us about your journey so far. Oh, so I only really got back into acting in January of this year. Um, prior to that, I last did acting at school, which is a long time ago. <laughs> Why was it that you ended up taking that long break before coming back? I took that break because I had always been a big lover of science. Science was always it's a big deal for me. It still is. It's a big part of my life. Um, We push it, or not push it on the children, but really teach the children it. Um, So I did a science degree. I was really focused on that, and I went through uh, my A levels for science and. I was very focused on doing that so I never really looked at doing anything else even though I'd always enjoyed acting I never I never went back to it I just stayed so focused on on doing the degree and then I guess life just happened after that (laughs) jobs and then babies I've got two children who are toddlers and who are crazy um I had anxiety and depression after the kids and meeting new people was a massive deal for me I don't I didn't leave the house properly for like four and a half months after my first child was born um and then I just sort of after going through the counseling made the decision that I needed to do something and I wasn't really sure what that was and then I saw this advert pop up on Facebook about Northern Star Acting and holding auditions and I applied for the audition and on the morning of the audition I still wasn't convinced that I was gonna go I was still telling myself no you know there's you know don't just don't you can't do it can't do it all those strangers um but I got up sucked it up and went off to to the audition and so how did you manage to talk yourself into it because I will tell you that when when we have done auditions and we've spoken to people afterwards when we've had people who haven't shown up mm-hmm. quite often it has been something similar they've just yeah. said you know I, I've got anxiety and I found it really difficult what was it for you that got you from thinking I don't know if I'm going to go to making that decision and going right I'm, I'm doing it I think I think I'd just hit the point where I knew something had to change there was something that was missing and I think by that morning even though deep down I felt I just couldn't do it there was another part of me that knew that I had to do it I just had to get up and go and do it because nothing was going to change if I didn't nothing was going to get better I was just going to be living in this cycle of looking for what was missing and that 
that's not helpful. That's not a helpful or healthy place to be. So I think I'd got to the point where I just needed to do it. So it was a really big deal for you, wasn't it? To it was, yeah. be there with a room full of strangers and to put, you know, to, to put yourself out there and go for it. Absolutely, yeah. It was it was a really big deal to do that. Um How did and you I was feel during the audition. Were you still terrified? I was pretty terrified, yeah, but I think I managed to hide it quite well. Oh, <laughs> I hope. Be great to be there. You did hide it very well. Um yeah, so I was I was pretty terrified during it, but I think as it went on, I got more relaxed. Like I turned up quite early because I'm I'm usually quite early to things. Um, and I got chatting to another auditionee who also got accepted into the tribe. And we were just, I think it relaxed me a little bit talking to other people um, beforehand, just like, because I was sat with him and we were just one on one and then someone else joined us. And I think because it was gradual before I got in the room. Yeah. Um, I had relaxed a little bit. And as the audition went on, I felt more relaxed and more comfortable with the people there. Um, I think you also work up in your head like what it's going to be like. Like you see on on TV all these these auditions that people go to, and it's the the snootiest people you've ever seen yeah. in your life that are holding the auditions. And then that's the opposite you. to us. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, in walked you in your Northern Star hoodie and your new rock boots, and I was like, oh, okay, I can do this. <laughs> Oh, brilliant, brilliant. And about the depression and anxiety, how is that now? How are you dealing with everything by now? So how long has it been? Is it about a year? Since, since what, a year since? Since you joined Northern Star and started out. No, January, January this year I joined. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I do this all the time. I think because people progress so quickly. I always think they've been with us so much longer than they have. But well, that's January is amazing. It's amazing how far you've come in that time. Um, not just with acting, but just you yourself. You know, as as yeah, developed. absolutely. And I think that's sort of what has made me realize on days when I've felt a bit you know like oh should I be doing this and it's, it's the difference that it's made in my life in general not just in in my acting it's I'm a happier person with my family and and I still do have days because you never I don't think you're ever fully free of depression and anxiety I think it's something that always lingers but I'm better equipped to deal with it now awesome. um so my down days are f less than they used to be. There's, there's fewer of them. And how do you deal with it when you do get a down day? Because I know we've been working since boot camp and you've been mm -hmm. updating us every day and what you've been doing. And I've seen that you have had a few bad days, but you have still managed to keep on track. So how? Yeah. what advice would you give to somebody else who is in the position where they might be having bad days and they don't know how they can keep going. Get a support network. Get a support network, get your friends involved, let them know, um, talk to people, let them know you're having a rough day because it, misery loves company, they say, but it, you know, it's, it's true. If you talk about your problems and somebody else can go, oh yeah, that's really, you know, that's rubbish. Um, are you going to manage to do this today? Or if you say something that you think is a really bad thing that's happened, it might not be that bad. And somebody else might be able to say, you know, yeah, you're all right. You're doing a great job. Come on, you can do this. And that's, that really helps. For me as well, having set tasks to do every day has been a big help because then if I don't do them, yeah, I feel a bit rubbish about it, but if you, you if you do one of them you feel like oh, I have achieved something it's like don't have zero days always do something even if it's the smallest little thing um I found a tool when well, my friend friend found a tool for me um called Habitico which is an app on on your phone that's like a game it's a to-do list but it's a game yes and that's my friends involved as well so we're all in this little team on Habitica. And we, we have these tasks. And basically, if I don't do my tasks, the, the bad guys kill them as well. 
<laughs> so it's like some accountability for me that you know, I have to have to get up because if I don't, then Katie's going to shower me because I killed her avatar. So I have to do Oh, that's awesome. So that's called Habitica. Habitica, it's an app. On uh, yeah, Habitica. you did tell me about this a while ago and I downloaded it, but I haven't used it yet. So I'm going to start. It's great, Erin. Honestly, it's really helped me. Um, so awesome. Yeah, it's on Android and iPhone, I think. So um yeah it's really good i recommend it if people are struggling with to-do lists <laughs> oh brilliant that's a very social app so definitely get your friends in because that's i think if you don't have your friends in your team with you it's just a to-do list whereas yeah. if you've got your friends there it becomes the game oh so that's awesome um cool now then you've got a condition haven't you which kind of Effect, well not kind of which affects the way you need to prepare your roles and everything for acting yeah. so let, let me know if I'm saying this wrong aphantasia yeah that's right yeah now before I'd met you I had never ever heard of this so I still don't know that much about it and um, I have asked around and I've learned a bit about it, but I'm going to let you explain. Will you explain to everyone out there who doesn't know what it is? Yeah, absolutely. So aphantasia is um, a suggested name, which tells you, you know, how early of a discovery slash realisation it is. It's a suggested name for a condition where a person doesn't have a mind's eye, so you can't see images in your head um, for me, it's, it's pretty much at all, but it is on a spectrum. So some people, like you get people that can draw from memory, like my mother-in-law, for example, she can draw people from memory. And, and then there's me who I can't even see the outline of a face. I've got, there's nothing that's just black. I can't, you know, you close your eyes, see the back of my eyelids. There's no imagery there um, for me. And it is just people who don't have a mind's eye. It's, uh, it was quite an interesting discovery, actually, <laughs> for me. And how does that affect your acting? It's, it's, a, it's a really hard one to talk about um, in general because I have no reference point for how other people do these things. Mm. It's something that I'm, I'm trying to learn to talk about. So from what I understand, people see themselves in these roles they will see the environment as um as the scene that they're in they'll see the scene around them um which isn't something that I can do so for me with roles it's I guess it's more of a feeling because I'm quite I, I have feelings quite strongly so I would feel like I was in an environment rather than being able to see it I'd kind of have to shut off from what I was seeing around me and be focused on who I was so it's like instead of imagining I am a person I have to be become that person almost and totally like lose who I am because otherwise it's really hard to to not just be me when I'm doing things um yeah I guess does that make sense? Yeah, really absolutely, absolutely. And with it being such a new discovery, there could be other people out there who maybe struggle to prepare for roles who don't, who don't really know why. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, How can people find out if they might have this? There is a... What I found out through... I, I found out, I was sat on the sofa when I found out, so... I was on the sofa talking to my now husband, he was my fiance then, um, and he said to me, we're just start watching telly, and he said, I've seen this really interesting article, and I was like, oh, all right, because we swap stories about science articles we found, and he said, there are some people that can't see images in the head, and I said, what, what, what do you mean, and he was like, they just, they can't see pictures in the head, and I was like, people can see pictures in their head? Well, how <laughs> and it, and then we sort of looked at each other both really confused and i was like I, I didn't know that people actually saw things in the head um 
it's not for me it's not something that that I've had and lost for some people it is like the first discovery of it and um, when I read up on this was that um a fella had had a head injury in, and he'd woken up in hospital and all of a sudden couldn't see things in his head so he walked to a, a neuroscience department at university and was like why can I now not see things in my head and it kind of the all this research blew up into it um the article he'd read about it was through the BBC and there is actually a test on the BBC. If you type in aphantasia test um, to Google, it does come up with this test you can do and it's a spectrum and it will tell you whereabouts on the spectrum you are. For me, I was right down at like a one or a two. I was like, no, you, you can't see anything. <laughs> um, but for, for some people it could be higher than that or some people could be way off where they can see everything really vividly. Um, but yeah, it'd, it'd be really interesting if people think that they are that way, have a look on the BBC website because there really isn't that much known about it at the minute. It's not a, it's not a big, big condition that's, that's been like, you can't, you can't get a, a diagnosis at the doctors, for example, because they just, nobody knows about it yet. That's so very interesting. So what's planned then for your future? What have you got coming up? I mean, we've already spoken about this feature film, but what other plans have you got? Um, I've got a lot of things that I'd like to do. I'd like to do some, some things on the stage. I've got a couple of auditions coming up for the stage. Oh, brilliant. Um, my idea, like in a perfect world role, would be like the a detective in a long running like prime suspect that you know I'd love that something like that would be ideal for me that's my my ultimate goal I think that role would suit you actually I can see you yeah. <laughs> like that brilliant and how can people find you I am on Twitter um at that's at vh actress I think I am on Facebook, Victoria Hudson. I am on Instagram. I can't remember my name for that, but you can get to <laughs> <laughs> Look at Victoria Hudson. <laughs> just, just Victoria Hudson, I'm around. I do have a You've website. as well, haven't you? I, I have, yeah. Um, it's very new blog, so there's only an intro post on it at the minute, but it is something. I am due doing another one, actually, so that's Ooh. on my to-do list for tomorrow. I'll get that on Habitica. Um, yeah, it is. Um, my introduction post is, is basically a disclaimer saying I am from Yorkshire. It's going to be sweary, so please don't get offended. <laughs> um, I do have a blog that's called An Actress Arrives. Um, and I also have a website that's really early stages, um, and that's uh, victoria-hudson.co.uk. Um, those are the main places you can find me. So you're at a really exciting time at the minute, haven't you? You've been yeah. at, what is it now, six months? Six months. And you've just booked your first role in a feature film. And you're yeah. just at that point where you're about to really get yourselves out there. So everybody yeah. watch this space. Yeah, it's been a really exciting week. I've had lots of, lots of things coming in for send me a self tip, send me a uh, you know come to this audition come to this casting so yeah it's been it's been a really good week actually for stuff like that it's excellent fantastic. excellent right victoria thank you for coming and speaking to us it's thank been you very, very interesting and i will well, speak to you soon i'm happy to talk to anyone about aphantasia if they've got any questions or they just want to spam me with anything i'm happy to speak to people about it Oh, brilliant, brilliant. And do you have any last words that you would like to say to the world? Um, be kind to each other. I'm stealing that slightly from Ellen, but be kind to each other. Stop with all the hate. Awesome. <laughs> stop it. Peace and yeah, love. <laughs> and we will end it on that one. Thanks, Victoria. Thank you. Bye. Bye.